This problem says you get a triple scoop ice cream cone with flavors vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry as possibilities. The flavors can be repeated or not, so you can duplicate a flavor or, or have all different flavors. And two cones are said to be different if the flavors are the same, but they, they're on the cone in different orders. So putting strawberry at the top versus putting strawberry at the bottom of the scoop is a different cone. Given all that, how many different cones could you possibly come up with? Think about this though. There aren't any restrictions on the three flavors. You can use chocolate all three times, strawberry all three times, vanilla all three times. You can use two chocolates and a strawberry, any combination. Flavors can be repeated or not. That immediately tells you that this is not a permutation problem because that might be the first thing that you think about. But the prototypical example of a permutation problem is putting people in line for a photo. And the one thing you can be sure about when you're lining people up for a photo, you're not going to clone a person and have that person appear more than once. So whenever you're thinking permutations, you're not duplicating the object. This problem does. So this is not a permutation problem. I hope that makes you think about the fundamental counting principle because that's sort of your default method of solving a counting problem when all else fails. So order is important. So I'm going to go back to the old standby, the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle says if you can find the number of ways to do one subtask, the number of ways to do another subtask, and you keep going and break the task down into subtasks, then all you do at the end is multiply the number of ways to do each subtask and you'll get the final result. When I go to choose the first flavor, I have three choices. I can choose any of the three flavors, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla. But because flavors can be repeated, I have those same three choices for the second flavor and for the third flavor. So by the fundamental counting principle, there are going to be 3 times 3 times 3. There are going to be 27 different ways to build a cone with three scoops. If flavors can be repeated, and if the order the flavors appear in the cone matters. Think about that carefully, why it's not a permutation, and why it's 3 times 3 times 3. These are the sorts of things. The actual mechanics of the calculation are easy. The difficult part, if there is a difficult part, is knowing what to do. In order to help that, let's actually do a variation on this problem. We still got the same triple scoop ice cream cone. We still got vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. But this time, flavors cannot be repeated. But the cones are still different if the order of the scoops is different. That changes things, but I still want to know how many different cones are possible. Knowing that flavors can't be repeated means that it's not the same as the previous problem. But it's similar because order is still important. So this is really a permutation, the prototypical. These flavors might as well be people standing in line for a photo. Vanilla could be John, chocolate could be uh, Angie, and strawberry could be Paul. Since they can't be repeated, and order is important, this is a permutation. I know that when I'm taking a series of n objects and putting them all in order, that the answer is just n factorial. So this would be 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. That's different from the last problem, because in the last problem I could repeat flavors. This time I can't. So there are 6 different cones possible if flavors cannot be repeated but the order still matters. Now, I will say one thing. You could still go back to the fundamental counting principle to solve this problem. I recognize that this was a permutation and I jumped to the answer quickly. But if you didn't want to or if you didn't notice, the fundamental counting principle will still work. I've still got three choices to make. One choice for the first flavor, one for the second, one for the third. So I can still do the product and get the answer. The difference lies in the counts. When I first start off, 
I can choose any of the three flavors, strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla, for the first flavor. Now, if I could repeat the flavors, it would be three again, but it says I can't repeat the flavors. So once I've chosen a flavor for the first flavor, I've got to eliminate it. I can't use it again, so there are only two ways to get the second flavor. And once I've chosen the first two flavors, I only have one choice for the third flavor. So according to the fundamental counting principle, I multiply 3 times 2 times 1 and get 6. But the point is, if you don't recognize that, or if you just feel more comfortable working with the fundamental counting principle, it does still work. Let's get our money's worth out of this problem. Let's take the same triple scoop ice cream cone with the same three flavors, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. But let's make an even more drastic change. This time, the flavors cannot be repeated, which is was what was true in the last problem. But this time, the order of the scoops doesn't matter either. So what would I do? If the flavors can't be repeated and order is not important, that's the signature of a combination. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a combination of three flavors, but I'm taking them all three at a time. Why? because the flavors can't be repeated and order is not important. That's how I know it's a combination. I'm taking all three flavors and putting three, all three on the cone. Well, how many ways can I do that? According to the formula for combination, N is three and R is three, so that's N factorial over the product of R factorial and N minus R factorial. So remember the formula N factorial R factorial, N minus R factorial. But what happens when N and R are the same thing? Well, in the denominator, you get 3 minus 3 when you subtract, so you end up with a 0 factorial. We know 0 factorial is 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So you get 6 over 6 which is one. So there's only one way you can do this if you're going to take all three flavors, not repeat them, and not worry about what order they were put in. If you want to do that in the calculator, I keep going back to the calculator because you really want to practice these calculator keystrokes. Your calculator may be your best friend on this type of problem. So you put in three, then you do shift two, and then you put in the R, which is 3. And then to have the calculator display the result, you press equal. And you'll see that you'll get a 1. Now, I said we wanted to do this just for practice, but honestly, if you think about what you were doing before you even started, you should have known that the answer was going to be 1, because if you've got three flavors, you can't repeat them, and you're not worried about what order you put them on the cone. There's only one way to do that. You just put them on there. All three have to go on there, and you're not worried about order. There's only one way to do that. To make that a little clearer, let's change the problem just a little bit. Let's go back to our vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry example. We still have three flavors, but this time we're going to do a double scoop cone. We've been doing a triple scoop cone. This time we're going to have three choices of flavors, but we're only going to choose two. Flavors still cannot be repeated, and the order of the scoop does not matter. Flavors can't be repeated, order doesn't matter. That tells us it's a combination again. But what you need to be thinking about, this is exactly like the previous problem we worked, except before N was 3 and R was 3. But this time, N is 3 and R is 2. Because even though you've got three flavors to choose from, you're only picking them in subsets. Think back to the problem we did with the bicycle built for two. We were picking four people in pairs to go on the bicycle built for two. In the same sense, we're choosing from three scoops. We're only picking them in pairs to go on the cone. Well, now the calculation changes a little. It's still three, choose two. Combination of three things chosen two at a time. I will keep in mind the problem says don't evaluate this, so this is the answer they want. But part of what I'm doing here is giving you practice with the calculator, so this is the answer they wanted. They said to do it symbolically and to not evaluate it. 
But for practice, let's go ahead and do it. Can't hurt. You know you're going to, to do 3 factorial over the product of 2 factorial and 3 minus 2 factorial. And you could also do it on your calculator, but this one's so simple that you could do that by hand also pretty easily. The big thing is to, to notice the difference between when things aren't permutations or combinations. You can always fall back on the fundamental counting principle. If you notice something's a permutation, you can use that, or you can still fall back on the fundamental counting principle. And when something's a combination, you've got to recognize that.